morning, Oasis Christian family. Good morning. Good morning. Hello to you, everyone out there on Facebook, uh, the, um, AKA Facebook. Yes. So right now, let's make sure you share, tag your friends, whatever you have to do. We used to be able to do a watch party. I don't think we can, but let's get the word out today. Satan is a liar. Yes. Yes, he is. Satan yes, is a liar. Yes, yes, he, he will is. come against you. He will try. He will try. He will try. But he can't. He can't. He can't. He can't because, he because you, me, we yes. are children of the king. Yes, hallelujah. We are blood bought, born Woo! again. Praise yes. God. Praise Glory. God. Glory. Praise Glory. God. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way in here today. Have your way in here today, Holy Spirit. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We give you all the glory, all the honor, Father. Oh, you are a liar, Satan. You are a liar. Our Father, our Father, our Father protects us. He guides us. He leads us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be with us. Be with us. Set your angels down around to sing and to worship with us right now. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We praise your name, Father. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Praise your name. Whew. Yes. 
Ooh, so there's just a sweet you. spirit flowing right now. Ha! Oh, Ooh. Ha! ha! Sweet spirit. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Whoa. I don't think I'm supposed to go on to the confession just yet. But give you all the glory, all the honor. All the honor, all the honor. Accept Jesus into your heart right now. Ask the Holy Spirit to come in right now. Bring him in. Bring him in.
that nobody else can give you. We can love each other, but there's nothing like the everlasting love of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. His name is wonderful. Let's just say it a couple of times. Jesus. 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 We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Do it again. We give you. We give you all. 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 The glory. The glory.
if you have an interpretation, Thank please you. give it. Thank you. Yeah, there's a shift in, there's a turning. Things are about to change. The enemy thought he had one over on you. <laughs> but he's still the liar. He was the, the, the liar from the beginning, and he is the liar now. And he is under your feet. Yes. And things are about to yes. turn around. Hey! Things are about yes. to change. Yes. There's a shifting in the atmosphere. Yes. It's a shifting going on. And it's turning the boat around. Oh. It's turning the boat around. Yes. The enemy is still defeated. Yes. He is yes. still yes. under your feet. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you, Lord. Give God the praise. Yes. Yes. told you you are strong Hallelujah. and I repeat it I am strong he said I didn't mean that just when you were sick I mean that today and every day That's good. so say this with me if you're ever feeling any any doubt say this I, I am, am strong. strong I am strong I am strong I am strong thank you Jesus Hallelujah. thank you Jesus Oh, how good our Father is. Yes. Like the song says, we don't deserve it, but he'll come after us. Yes. He, he's always there. All you have to do is turn and say, come in. Let him in. That's all we have to do is let him in. He's always right there. We may think he's not there, but I promise you, he is there. You just got to let him in, and he will be there. Praise God. Let's continue to give our praises, our thanks, our offering to our Father. I want you to get your tithes ready. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Just repeat after me. As I tithe and give offerings, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs. Raises and, bonuses. Raises and bonuses, benefits, benefits. Sales, and sales and commissions, favorable settlements, favorable settlements. Estates, and inheritances. estates and inheritances, interest and income, interest and income. Rebates, and rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, discounts and dividends. Checks, in the mail. checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, gifts and surprises. finding money, finding money. Bills decreased. Bills, decreased. Bills, paid off. Bills paid off. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank, you, Lord, Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give unto the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me remind you how you can give here at Oasis Christian Center. You can send your tithes, your offerings, plant a seed to P.O. Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. We are physically located at 35 Lee Road 223. Our church mobile is 334-520-7538. We do have some business reply envelopes that you can call. Come by the church, pick those up if that is how you would like to do. 
If you have your PayPal account, go to www.paypal.me forward slash Oasis Family Church and you can give that way. Just follow the prompt. You can text to give 334-274-7885. You can set that up one time or for continuous giving. Again, just follow the prompts as they come up. If you'd like to do online giving, go to aconlinegiving.com forward slash 4832. And that is how you can give also. Um, you can go to our website at www.oasisfamilychurch.net. There you'll find the donate button. Click on that donate button and you can give that way. Um, you can also set up the Cash App. Um, download that on your phone and give by the Cash App. And if I'm right, dollar sign Oasis Family Church. Yes, put in the dollar sign Oasis Family Church and you can give that way. Praise God. Um, let's turn it over to our pastors right now. I don't think I forgot yeah. For an awesome word. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Glory to God. God is in the house. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. I know he's there where you're at watching uh, by Facebook this morning. And uh, I'm Pastor Sharon. This is Pastor Rob. <laughs> I've been forgetting to um, say who we are. <laughs> but anyway, we're so glad you joined us today. And we know that the presence of the Lord is right there with you. He's, he's very strong in this place today. And we want to just invite you to receive what God has for you today. He is a good God, isn't he? He is an awesome yes. God. Yes. That was a little little weak. He is a good God. He yes. is a good God. Praise the Lord. And so um, before I turn it over, over to Pastor, I want to just pray over the service today. If you'll just bow your heads with us. I just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every part of this service. Father, we thank you that your presence has been so strong in this place today, Father God. And we just speak over the word today, Father God, that you will speak through us, Father, in a great and mighty and strong way. Father God, have your way in this service today. Have your way in the ministering of the word today. And Father, we just ask you to touch each and every heart, Father God, minister to each and every need. Father, and change the lives, Father God, of those that are seeking you today. And we give you all praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Praise God. Glory. Well, you, you guys know it's neighbor looking time. I want glory you to look at your neighbor. I want you to smile at your neighbor. I want you to point at your neighbor. And I want you to say, I came, I came to, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day. And I declare, and I declare I'm, ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, Are you ready to, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day? And I declare, and I declare I'll, I'll never, 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 ever, ever be the same, be the same again, again in Jesus' in name. Jesus name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Bibles and go to James chapter 3, verse number 16. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. Y'all were ready for the word. I love yes. it. I love it. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, the Bible is it is a history book, but what I most enjoy about the Bible is that it's a practical application. Amen. You can put it to use in your life and it'll change things in your life. And that's what I, I love, and that's the way that we like to teach it Amen. is in a practical application. So, in James 3 and 16, we're going to be teaching today about ways to stay out of strife. Right. How many of y'all know that's important? Amen? Yes. So, James 3 16 says, Where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. And strife, defining strife, is angry or bitter dis disagreement over fundamental issues, conflict, friction, discord, dispute. Quarrel, competition, uh, contention, bickering, or an ang angry undercurrent. Now, we want to focus on ways to stay out of strife. Now, I'm going to give you several different keys, and Pastor Sharon's going to give you some. And um, 
the main one, the, the number one on this one today from, from myself is filter out words. Filter our words. Speak gentle words. Amen. Proverbs 15, 1 and 2, this is in the Amplified. A soft and gentle and thoughtful answer turns away wrath, but harsh and painful and careless words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise speaks knowledge that is pleasing and acceptable, but the babbling mouth of fools spouts folly. Now, sometimes that's us, isn't it? Amen. 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 Now, in the Passion Translation, it says, Respond gently when you are confronted, and you'll diffuse the rage of another. Responding with sharp, cutting words will only make it worse. Now, I've been foolish with my words many times. And sometimes I've vented my frustration with wrong words. Now, on, on Facebook, and I'm going I'm to share a little secret with y'all. Y'all don't know this. Okay, on Facebook, Pastor Sharon, uh, a few days ago or a week or so ago, posted a, a great saying that the Holy Spirit gave her. Be careful when you vent not to leak any toxins. And I know you've seen that. A lot of you have seen that. I know a lot of people viewed it. And what you don't know is 99% of the stuff that goes on Facebook like that is Pastor Sharon in the Holy Spirit. I mean, he just drops things down to her and, and she's just putting it on there. And I mean, people are just, I mean, it's just going out there. Amen. And, um, but, okay, so if we don't filter our words, we will leak toxins. Ooh, yes. hmm. right. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope he's not talking about you. In <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs 15, in the message, one and two, it says a gentle response diffuses anger, but a sharp tongue kindles a temper fire. Knowledge flows like spring water from the wise. Fools are leaky faucets. Isn't that a good? Fools are leaky faucets, drip, dripping nonsense. So we need to diffuse the situation. Instead of getting into an argument and allowing it to escalate, we need to say kind words. We need to be careful with our words. We don't need to vent wrong words or sharp words or critical words. We've got to really pay attention to what we're saying. So that's one way to stay out of strife. Another way is to humble ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever noticed that when we get in strife, and I know this is the case with me and I believe it's the case with you, when we get into strife, it has the issue, the main root issue is pride. We want to be right. We're going to be right. We're going to have the last word. We're going to have our say. We're going to put in our two cents. But, you know, we, we override the Holy Ghost. We override what we should be doing, and we say wrong, critical words. So 1 Peter 5 and 5 in the NIV version says, Clothe yourselves with humility. So God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. In the Passion Translation, it says, In every relationship... Each of you must wrap yourself around the apron of a humble servant because God resists you when you are proud. That's a mic drop moment. God resists us when we're proud but multiplies grace and favor when we're humble. So we need to be clothed with humility about whether we're right or not. To keep peace, the humble person won't argue about it. Even when they know for a fact that they're right. Now, I, this next point, I know we all know this. It's very easy to argue. Yeah. It's easy to get drawn into an argument. Um, some people are easier to get into an argument than other people. That's right. Amen. This is really quiet today. <laughs> okay. We all know people, maybe it's us, that have an argumentative spirit on them. They'll argue about the sun didn't come up this morning. They'll argue about the time of day that it came up. They'll find something, the distance to the church, on the way to the church. It's the wrong, no, that's, it's not six miles, it's 7.2 miles. They'll find something to argue about. Amen. Those kind of people, you just got to just, just let it go. Your flesh and my flesh just wants to rise up. And we want to put our two cents in. We want to say some stuff. Everything's not a debate. You shouldn't argue about every little point. There's some things 
I understand we're going to have disagreements, but it shouldn't be that way. Living Bible in Mark 3 and 25. Get this. Mark 3 and 25 in the living. A home filled with strife and division destroys itself. In the New Living, that same scripture says similarly, a family splintered by feuding will fall apart. Yes. So the, the picture the Word of God is painting us is strife tears things apart. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible tells us in different ways a fool loves to argue. Mm -hmm. A fool must have the last word. Mm -hmm. Avoid the argument. Mm -hmm. Now the spirit of strife, and it is a spirit, will try to bait us. You ever been listening to something and you weren't even in the conversation and suddenly they brought you in the conversation and the next thing you know, you're in the middle of strife? I've had the Holy Spirit tell me before, don't, don't, don't go to this place today. And, I, and I, I, I wasn't used to hearing the Holy Spirit. This was years and years ago. And I didn't recognize His voice. And I said, that can't be right. There would be nothing wrong with me going to that place today. And so I, I went. And it wasn't a few minutes we were involved in the worst strifeful situation, more arguing and more junk going on. And the Holy Spirit, if I had just listened and obeyed His voice, I wouldn't even been in that place. That's right. That's right. Amen. The Bible said, blessed are the peace, peacemakers. Not blessed are the people that are right. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll move on. All right. <laughs> be the bigger person. Amen. You can be right and be miserable. Or you can have peace, even though you are right, by not, by not pointing it out. Only God can change people. Amen. Let's say that again. Amen. Only God can change people. Yes. We get into strife because we try to change people. That's right. As spouses, we try to change each other into the image of Christ. We try to get them to do this and do that. And that just doesn't work. The Lord has to do that work in us. It's, it's, it's not a work that can be forced. It must be a work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Amen. See, most strife, a lot of strife is about ego. Mm -hmm. Our ego wants to say, I told you so. Our ego wants to say, I told you I was right and you were wrong. That's pride. Doesn't that make you, I mean, your flesh, it just rises up. I told you I was right and you were wrong. It makes you feel so, your flesh just, woo, that feels so good. And it'll get you in so much trouble with God and with people, and it'll mess your finances up, it'll mess your peace up, it'll just tear your home up. Amen. Okay, another way to stay out of strife, this is the third one, pause. The Bible tells us to be slow to speak. In James 1 and 19, the NIV version, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. Amen. Now, what I found is that my pause button, my, my slow to speak button, is broken. Because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work. I'd like for it to work, but I override it. And I say what I shouldn't say in a way I shouldn't say it. Hmm. My quick comeback button, it works perfectly. <laughs> oh, you called me what? Let me tell you. Let me say this. Let me say that. Amen. And then before you know it, you're all over the place. You, uh -huh. You're messed up. Your emotions messed up. They're messed up. They dislike you. They would like to strangle you. You'd like to strangle them. <laughs> I know. I know. I know this is for your neighbor this morning. I understand this is not for you. Then maybe you can get a CD and give it to somebody. Or you could... Maybe you can share it on somebody else's Facebook page that you think they really need to hear this message today. So you're going to do them a favor and you're going to, you're going to share this to their Facebook page. The Lord, the Lord told me you needed to hear this message today. So I'm going to share it. You're going to get a blessing out of this. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> what I found, if I, pastor, would pause more, Space of time. Ten second rule. If I, I, I don't need just ten seconds though. I need, I need a day and a half sometimes. I need, I need three days. You understand? Yes. Well, I up after three days. <laughs> you know, if they tell you if you're going in a store and you got a problem with buying stuff, one of the ways you get rid of that, that problem is you don't buy it. You, you've already paused. When you go in the store and you find something you want, you don't buy it that day. And it gets you out of the habit of instantly doing it. 
And you know, that's what we got to get out of the habit of instantly saying what we think, putting our opinion in, putting our two cents in, saying that sharp, critical word, getting ourselves in the middle of strife, having a rash mouth, a quick mouth. It opens the door for more strife in our lives. Okay, I'm going to give you another one. This is number four. Another way to stay out of strife is to walk away. Just walk away. You're on your job and they're, they're trying to pull you into strife. And you don't have to say anything. You don't have to look any certain way. You don't have to be agitated. You just turn and walk away. We need to walk away. Sometimes we just need to get off the phone. Sometimes we need to get off Facebook and stop texting. And thank you. Thank you very much. I see all these people arguing on text. And I'm, I'm like, why on God's earth would somebody argue when you've got time to think about it? I mean, you know, the, the, on, on Facebook, you see all this stuff, and I'm like, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. They're having a, a, an argument. Never mind, I'm sorry. I just I got off track there. When, it, when it, the conversation turns negative, walk away. Step back. And if we don't, we're going to get pulled into it. On Facebook this week, I saw somebody posted this. I'm not sure who did it. I have no desire to argue with anyone. I choose to walk away. I just want peace. Amen. I like that. Amen. I like that. Another way to stay out of strife is number five. Is respect. We're going to camp out right here for a minute. Respect differences of opinion. Amen. Okay, now here we, here, this is where we live. This is where we're fixing to camp out and just talk for a minute. Okay. Every one of us in this room is different. We all have different likes, different dislikes, different places we like to go, different places we don't like to go. We've got certain foods that we like, certain foods that we don't like. But I'm telling you, we've got to respect, right. respect. You know, who, who is it that sang that song, Respect? Uh -huh. uh, Aretha Franklin. Okay, we needed to play Aretha Franklin this morning. I'm telling you, respect is what we need in the body of Christ. Respect is what we need in America right now. We need to respect differences of opinion. My opinion is not wrong just because my opinion is different from yours. Your opinion is not wrong just because it's different than mine. We need to have honest, goodness, respect between each other for differences of opinion. Amen. Amen. Okay. A few years ago, I'll give you a good example of this. I went to the doctor and he asked me, he said, have you got your, this was just a general practitioner, he said, have you got your, your flu shot yet? And I said, uh, no sir, I haven't. I said, I really don't do that. And so he, he told me, being a good doctor, and he is a good doctor, he's very educated, he told me, he said, me and my family, we get a flu shot every year. And he was telling me every, every good thing about the flu shot. And uh, then he told me medically, here's the tests that have been done, and this and that. And I said, that is cool. I said, I believe every word you're saying. I said, you are very knowledgeable and very educated in this. I respect you. Mm -hmm. I said, but it's not for me. Yes. Yes. And when I said that, uh. this professional doctor, <laughs> he got angry. He slammed the door. He went out. We didn't finish my appointment. Oh, wow. The thing that I actually went there for, I did not get to talk to him about. Because he got upset with me because I had a different opinion than he had. Uh -huh. Excuse me, I'm, I have a right to my own opinion. Yeah. That's right. You understand? I, yeah. I, I'm not to be subjected to something that I don't, I don't have peace about right. in my yeah. own spirit. Right. Now, I'm, hang on now. I'm not saying that I'm right. Okay. Uh -huh. Hang on. I'm not saying I'm right and he's wrong. That is not what I'm getting at today. I'm saying I have a right not to get it, yes. and he has a right to get it, uh -huh. and I have a right for him not to talk down to me because I do it. Don't act like I'm stupid because I made this choice that's not compatible with your choices. That's right. That's you understand? Right. I was respectful when I talked to him. I was courteous when I talked to him, but he didn't like it, and that's okay. That's okay. I don't remember if I've actually been back. Hallelujah. <laughs> I will go back. I mean, I, I'm not mad at him in any way. Um, we have to learn to disagree agreeably. Amen. Or we're going to stay in strife. Amen. 
Amen. You can't force people to your opinions all the time. And you can't be mad at them because they've got a different opinion than you do. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. There's a lot of people through the years that's told me I'm going to go on a side journey now. Uh, that's told me through the years, Pastor, here's the way you should do this church. Here's the way this should be done. Here's the way that should be done. I said, when you pastor, you do it that way. But let me tell you what. I'm going to do it the way God told me. I'm do it. And I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if it don't set well with you. I'm going to stand before him, and I'm going to do it the way he told me to do it. Not the way you told me to do it. You confused me. You messed me up. You will get me in strife and anger. But he won't. I have to stand doing what he told me to do. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Respect. Respect somebody else's opinion. Respect somebody else's way of doing something. Even if it's not the way that you do it. Even if it doesn't make sense to you the way they do it. Respect them. Don't talk down about them or to them. It's disrespectful. I thought this was a nice, sweet teaching message today. I think this all happened. It was, it was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> mm. We ostracize people when their opinions and their way of doing things is different than ours. And it opens the door for strife. Another way to stay out of strife is listen to the Holy Spirit. He'll lead us away from arguments and strife if we'll listen. He'll lead us by still waters. I know there's been a lot of times that the Holy Spirit has prompted me through the years once I learned a little bit how He speaks. And you know, you're constantly learning how He speaks and how He's, he's dealing with you. But I know after I started learning how He speaks, He'd tell me, don't say that now. Don't say that now. And some of the times I didn't obey Him and I always got messed up when I didn't obey Him. And, 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 and a lot of times it was just Paul's. You can talk about this later. Talking another time. Talking another day. This is the wrong time for this. Not now. Not now. And if I'll obey him, there will peace stay. Yes. I disobeyed him, strife everywhere. Yes. Amen. Amen. I don't like argument. I don't like strife. No. Amen. But I've been involved in it. I've been drugged into it. I've, I've been stupid enough to be in it or start it. Too many times we've all allowed our flesh to rule instead of the Spirit. We've said wrong words that open the door to arguing and strife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close on my part, and then Pastor Sharon's going to come up. I want to give you this. There's a couple of scriptures here. One of them is going to really open your eyes because I've never seen this scripture before. You're really going to like it. Ephesians 4 27. Of course, you know this will neither give place to the devil. And we know that um, we give him a place with wrong words. Wrong attitudes, we open the door for strife, and it's evil, it'll affect us, it'll affect our finances, it'll affect our safety. Strife is a destructive force. Now get this one. Here it is. Ephesians 4 27, the New Testament for everyone. I've never read it in this one before. And don't leave any loophole for the devil. Yes. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. There's a loophole there that he can get in the door through strife. He can get in and mess us up through strife, through arguing, through fussing. There's a loophole there for the devil. That's Ephesians 4, 27. That's in the New Testament for everyone. I like that one. It gives him authority over us. It gives him that, that loophole to harm us. And I'll stop with this. Joel Osteen said that he got in strife with Victoria, his wife, and said that she said something that he didn't really care for and it just... Uh, it bothered him real bad, and they were going out to do something with their family that day. They were going bike riding at a park or something. And he said, and it's just festering in him. And he said, he just, he's mad about it. And he's being real short um, to her, and he's just, uh, you know, just, just being wrong, you know, like we do sometimes. <laughs> I know I'm not alone in this room, but it sure sounds like I'm all by myself. <laughs> Nobody else, they're like, man, the pastor, pastor messed up. We need to pray for Pastor Jesus. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. <laughs> anyway, and, I, and I'm stopping with this one. He, he said he was upset and he, it was festering inside him. He's talking sharp and critical and he's just not doing right. He, he's not in the right spirit. 
He said they're out as a family and they're bike riding or whatever. And he said um, he had his little daughter. His daughter was very young at that time. He had her on the back of the bicycle. And, uh, you know, he was biking and uh, Victoria was had her own bike. And then his son, Jonathan, had, he was on a different bike. But he had just learned to ride his bike. He, he wasn't very old and he was... Now he, he could do it, but it was just barely. And he said uh, he saw, Joel said, Pastor Joel said he saw uh, a bike rider coming on the path, and he's flying down this path, and he is really barreling. And he said, and, um, this guy is a biker. You could tell he was really, really something. And he said as he's coming, he realized he cautioned Jonathan, Jonathan, stay to this side, because if you don't stay to this side, he could hit you. Jonathan, you know, pull it over, pull it over, pull it over. And he said he's doing this. And then right when the guy got right to him about to pass, Jonathan, not being experienced at, at doing that, young child, he got right in the guy's path and it flipped them both off their bicycles. Uh, it destroyed Jonathan's bicycle. It just messed him up. And they're both on the ground, and Jonathan's got cuts and bruises. Uh, Joel said he thought that Jonathan had broken bones because uh, it was such a bad hit wow. on, you know, because the guy was going so fast, and Jonathan was right in his way. And he said, um, you know, he, he got him up and it was just, you know, some cuts and bruises or whatever. And everything was okay. The bike was destroyed. But um, it'll be okay. And the Holy Spirit told him, what opened the door to this is you being in strife with Victoria. It let in an evil work of the enemy against your family. It's food for thought. Okay, ways to stay out of strife. Filter our words. Speak gentle words. Humble yourself. Pause. Walk away. Respect differences of opinion. Listen to the Holy Spirit. James 3 and 16 again. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That was awesome. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you for that word. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So stay out of strife at all costs. That's what the Lord's telling us this morning. But it's up to us to be the ones that stay out of strife. Amen. We have to, we have to uh, be in control over our flesh. You know, put our flesh down. Um, so I'm going to start in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, who's called uh, the children of God? Peacemaker. The peacemaker. Amen. So that's telling me that, you know, look, the Lord's calling us to be a peacemaker. Yeah. And the, I want to read that also in the New Living Translation. It says, God's bless, God blesses those who work for peace. Now, it sounds like peace that you have to work for it. It doesn't just you know, fall on us. You know, peace doesn't just fall on us uh, all the time. Sometimes we are in situations where the enemy is trying to steal our peace. Yes. So we have to work at having the peace of God. God blesses those who work for peace. Amen. For they will be called the children of God. Amen? So when you work for peace, when you are a peacemaker, you are called God's child. You know, I love God's blessings, don't you? Amen. I love the blessings of God. I would. Uh, there is nothing I'd like better than the blessings of God. And I don't want to do anything purposely that would take the blessings of God away from me. I want to be conscious of, you know, I want to stay in a place in the Lord where I'm receiving his blessings. I don't want to cut those blessings off. Well, the enemy tries to set us up so that we will lose the blessings of God, you know? But the peacemaker receives the blessings of God. That alone is enough uh, incentive for me to try to be a peacemaker, amen? And, you know, the peacemaker is called the child of God. Uh, why, did, why would you be called a child of God because of that? Because it, you are recognized as having the qualities or the characteristics of God. Amen. Amen. That makes you set apart. That makes you different from the world. You know, you, you're, you're not uh, 
carrying on the traits or the characteristics of the world or, or how, how you were before you got saved. You know, we didn't think twice about jumping into an argument. We didn't think twice about getting into the middle of a, a strifeful conversation. And as a matter of fact, we might have really enjoyed doing that. But now that we are God's child, we are separated from being like the traits of the world. We are to have the characteristics of God. God, you know, he hasn't called us, and this is going to be a great revelation to you. He has not called us to straighten everybody out. Amen. He has not called us to straighten everybody out. But he has called us to be a peacemaker. Be a peace. Make peace wherever you're at. You know, Satan wants to set you up for, he wants to set you up for strife. He wants to uh, steal your peace. He wants to steal uh, that godly witness that, that the Lord would have us to have wherever we go. Uh, he's the thief. He is the thief. Uh, he's the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So uh, James 3, chapter 3, and verses 17 and 18, in the Passion Translation, says, But the wisdom from above is always pure. Are we walking in the wisdom of God? We have to ask ourselves that. The wisdom from above is always, always pure. It's always filled with peace. That is from God. Peace is from God. Uh, it is considerate and teachable. It is filled with love and never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. That is strong right there, isn't it? Amen. The wisdom from God never displays prejudice or hypocrisy in any form. And it always bears the beautiful harvest of righteousness. God's seeds of wisdom's fruit will be planted with peaceful acts by those who cherish making peace. I like peace, don't you? Yeah. I like to stay in the peace of God because once peace isn't there, there's, the enemy is there. That's right. And that's just the way it is. So we want to always bear the fruit of righteousness. You know, we want to be willing to give uh, or yield to other people when they have differences of opinion. We want to yield that, as Pastor was talking about, the right that they have. You know, God doesn't force anything on us. You know, he lets us uh, uh, have our free will. He's given each and every one of us our free will. And so we don't need to, to try to pressure anybody into to our will. Amen? Yeah. God is God. Amen? And we need to leave uh, letting God be God mm -hmm. and not try to be God for, for him. Be willing, as I said, be willing to yield yourself to other people in order to make peace. Make peace at all costs. Amen. Stay away from strife. So, you know, stay in the blessings of God. Don't allow simple, silly little things uh -huh. steal your blessings. Uh -huh. Don't allow those things to take the blessings of God away from you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Think about that. The next time you get in a situation, is this worth giving up the blessings That's that good. God has oh, got in store good. for me? Oh, just think about that. Just stay in that peace and just yield yourself to stay in peace because it's not worth, you know, just to show I'm right, you know, it's got to be my way. I'm, I'm right about this situation. Mm -hmm. No, don't give up your blessings for that. Uh -huh. Not worth it. Romans 14 and verse 19 says, So then let us pursue what makes for peace. Let's pursue it, amen. Let's go after it. Let's run after what makes for peace. Yes. Amen. Let's, so let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual uplifting. Amen. Mutual uplifting. We've got to be uh, mutually uplifting one another. Amen. Not trying to uh, uh, make people see things our way. Not trying to uh, say, well, I, you know, you need to be like this because, you know, I'm, I'm so much holier and I'm so much higher in the spirit realm. I'm just way up there. And here you are. You know? No. We want to 
uh, make for peace and for mutual uplifting. Amen. That is godly character. Amen. That's who he is. That's who God is. Amen? Amen. When Jesus walked the earth, he never went around telling people, you know, uh, you, you, you just don't measure up. You know, you're just not measuring up. Uh -huh. No, he, he showed love, didn't he? He showed peace everywhere he went. He poured out peace to people. The uh, Passion Translation, Romans 14 and 19 says, So then make it your top priority to live a life of peace. Let me say that again. Make it your top priority. That's number one on, the, on our list, amen. Our, the top of our list to live a life of peace with harmony in your relationships. Eagerly seeking to strengthen and encourage one another. Amen. That is our, our job as a Christian. Amen. To uh, eagerly seek and strengthen one another. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I, I was so uh, blessed this morning when I came in. There were people coming in and uh, you could tell that they were uh, having struggles. The enemy was fighting them. But I, there was different ones in the body that was going to them and praying with them before the service. And you know, the, uh, the last few weeks, or the, I can say even a few months, this church, the body in this church, has been under uh, such a strong attack. You think about what you've gone through, what you've been through, you're not the only one, let me tell you. That's right. I know so many things that's going on with so many people. And we, Pastor and I, have never, and we were talking about this, we have never seen so many people in the body being attacked like they've been the last few weeks or few uh -huh. months. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, stuff like, you know, we've never been through before. Mm -hmm. But I believe when we came in this morning and we started showing that love and we started praying for each other, you know, it broke something. It broke something. You could just tell it. I mean, we just went right into the spirit. Amen. So there was a breaking this morning. Amen. The devil don't like it. Praise God for that. Amen. Glory to God. I was so, I was so uplifted, so blessed. Just coming in and seeing that. So just thank God. You know, you were encouraging one another. You were strengthening one another. Yeah. That's what we're to do as a church, yeah. as the body of Christ. Yeah. So make it your top priority to live a life of peace. You know, people are so caught up today in having their say. You know, letting their rights be known. But, you know, there's, there's so much hate in the world. So much, there's just so much violence and so much strife. But that is so not God. Amen? Right. That is so not God. You know, the church doesn't need to follow the world's example. The church needs to be an example for the world to follow. Amen? Praise God for the world to follow. We need to be that example. We need to show love. We need to show unity. We need to show peace. Amen. We need to be that example that the world needs today more than ever. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 9 and verse 50 says, Salt is good, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves. And be at peace with one another. Have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. The New Living Test uh, translation says, Salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other. Amen? Have salt among yourselves. And the Passion Translation says, Salt is excellent for seasoning, but if salt becomes tasteless, how can its flavor ever be restored? Your lives, like salt, are to be seasoned and preserved. So don't lose your flavor and preserve the peace and your union with one another. Amen? 
So everywhere we go, we're supposed to sprinkle Jesus. Amen? Yes. Yes. Sprinkle that yes. salt. Yes. Sprinkle yes. that flavor. You have a flavor of Jesus Christ. Amen? Don't be sprinkling hate. Don't be sprinkling division. Be sprinkling yes. the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. You know, the world needs the flavor of Jesus to be spread. Amen? Yes. They don't just, they don't need more hate. They don't need more of uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm better than you. They don't need, they need to see Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. So let the world see, let the world hear, and let the world feel the flavor of Jesus Christ Amen. through us. Amen. Through us. You know, Jesus uses us. He's not here now. He's in heaven. So we, here we are. Amen. He yeah. wants to use us. So we need to be a, a, a shining bright light in this dark world. Amen. So add seasoning in your home. Add seasoning on your job. Add seasoning in the grocery store. Add seasoning when you go to the beauty shop. Add seasoning when you, when you go to the uh, nail salon. Add seasoning when you're stuck in traffic. Uh-oh. I hit a nerve on that one. Add seasoning, amen, when you're stuck in traffic. Add seasoning when you're in church. Amen. Uh -huh. amen. And preserve that flavor. Yeah. Preserve means to maintain something in its original or existing state. Maintain that f flavor of Jesus. Maintain it. When you get stuck in traffic, maintain that flavor. Amen? Don't let go of it. Don't lose it. Maintain that flavor when you're going through a trial or a tribulation. Maintain that flavor even on your job when your boss is getting on your nerves or your co-worker is getting on your nerves. Maintain that flavor. Amen? Don't lose that flavor for God. Amen. Amen. Have you ever tasted a stale cracker? Uh huh. Yeah. We don't want to be a stale cracker. Oh, that's good. That's Amen. Good. That's good. Don't I mean, it's just nasty. A stale cracker, it's lost its saltiness. It's just, it's dry. It's, uh, it's lost its uh, freshness. It's just, uh, it's lost its fake flavor. It's just like, ugh. You know, you don't want a cracker. Amen. Throw the cracker in the garbage. We don't want the world want to throw us in the garbage. Amen. Praise God. So don't be like a stale cracker. Keep your freshness. Keep your saltiness. Amen. Don't lose your flavor. Don't lose your freshness in the Lord. Don't lose your excitement about the Lord. Amen. Stay fresh. Be excited. Remember that you were forgiven. Amen. You were where the, where the uh, sinner was before. He's just had, you know, you, you just had the, the light come to you. Amen. Uh -huh. Let's be Amen. light. Let's give the, uh, uh, share the saltiness of light to the world. Amen. Yes. So don't lose that. Don't lose your excitement for the word and the things of God. Amen. Psalms 34 and 8. And I'll close with this. Psalms 34 and 8 in the Amplified Bible says, Oh, taste and see yes. that the Lord our God is good. Yes. Amen. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord our God is good. Yes. Yes. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be in envy is the man who trusts and takes refuge in him. So, you know, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's that flavor again. There's that flavor. There is a, a good flavor, a fresh flavor. Amen? Amen. Salty. You know, I love salt. Don't uh -huh. take the salt away yeah. from me. I'll pastor... He, he took the salt away from me the other day. <laughs> I was cooking, and I'm, I'm like, you know, let's put a little salt on here. He, he took it out of my hand. Now listen to this. <laughs> I, can do I, kept my, I kept my peace. I kept my peace. But then when we sat down to eat, he said, this is so good, but it doesn't have enough salt. <laughs> Can you believe he had enough to say that? <laughs> Amen. Don't lose your 
flavor. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who trusts and takes refuge in him. Amen. Don't lose your taste. Don't lose your flavor. Don't lose your saltiness for God. Amen. Amen. Give him a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is good. He is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I forgave Pastor, though. I have rebuttal. Can I have one moment for rebuttal? When Pastor Sharon originally started salt and stuff, she'd use about a quarter of the salt box. box. Yes. And me and Granny would be eating, and we're like, it's real good. It's real good. It's a little salty. It's real good. And so Pastor Sharon has always been very liberal with yes, salting. Very. And so the other day when she was salting, I said, mm -mm, take it away from her. <laughs> <laughs> I like salt too, a lot. But, but then I, he, he said it needed salt. I, I actually, I'm just saying. I did that on purpose, actually. <laughs> I did it on purpose. <laughs> just to, uh, to start strife. <laughs> I was going to see if she was going to get into pot strife or she was going to keep her peace. But when he said it needs salt, that almost did it right. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God. God has a sense of humor. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Well, we want to give you this opportunity to meet Jesus Christ, to yeah. be your Lord and Savior today. He is so flavorful, flavorful. Yes. If I, I don't think I said that right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Amen. He is so good, and the word says, "Taste and see that the Lord yes. is good." Yes. And this would be the greatest thing that you've ever done in your life. Walking with God is so wonderful, so great, so awesome. There is no life like it. I have lived the other life. Mm -hmm. Everybody in here has lived the other life. And it didn't work for us. And I know it's not working for you. But there is a way that is a higher way, a better way, a life of peace that you can't even possibly imagine or understand. But that's what a life with Jesus Christ is all about. And so we want to give you this opportunity, opportunity to invite Jesus Christ into your to your life today. So if that's you today, just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Lord, I make you. Lord, I make you. My Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. I surrender my life. I surrender my life to you today. To you today. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise if you God. pray that simple prayer with us today, you are saved. You are born again. You are on your way to heaven. And you are on your way to having a new life in Jesus Christ. It is a wonderful, awesome life. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you pray that prayer with us today, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would love to hear about Amen. it. We rejoice with you today. Amen. We're just so blessed today that you have joined us. We're so Amen. blessed that you uh, received from, uh, from the Lord today. Amen. And uh, would you just write us a comment and let us know that you've received the Lord and, and also uh, send us a comment that uh, how the uh, service has blessed you today. Yeah. We'd just love to hear from you. So thank you for joining us and God bless you. And this time I'll turn it over to Jody. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Awesome word today, Pastor. Yeah. Awesome word. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sprinkle Jesus Amen. everywhere I go. Amen. Especially in my work. I'm gonna <laughs> sprinkle Jesus. Amen. Sprinkle Jesus everywhere. Praise God. Praise God. Um, let me remind you, if you would like to um, sow a seed or donate to Oasis Family um, Church, let me tell you how you can do that. You can send your um, donation or your 
sow your seed, excuse me if I could get that out, to P.O. Box 246, that's Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. We are physically located at 35 Lee Road, 223. Our church mobile, you can reach us at 334-520-7538. We do have some business reply envelopes here at the church. You can give us a call. Come by and pick those up. If you have your PayPal account set up, go to www.paypal.me forward slash Oasis Family Church. We also have the text to give. You can text to 334-274-7885. Follow the prompt. Set your account up that way. Um, if you want to do the online giving, you can reach us at acionlinegiving.com forward slash 4832. We also have the church website, www.oasisfamilychurch.net. There you can find the donate button. Click on that donate button, follow the prompts, you can set your account up. You can also go on Cash, Cash App, download that on your phone when you put your... Uh, dollar sign oasis family church um, to give that way want to remind you too you can listen to us on spirit radio so um 89.5 is it i'm not sure i'm not sure i don't, I don't want to tell you that be wrong but just internet. um internet 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 yeah spirit radio internet i'm sorry i was trying to look that up this morning um so make sure so Awesome service today, wasn't it? Awesome yeah, service. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He is so good. He is so good. I'd like to remind you to come be with us Wednesday at 7 o'clock. I hear there's a really good teacher teaching on the Holy Spirit again, so I think you might want to come and listen to her. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just bless. thank you for the word that we heard today. Oh, Father, we... We love you, we honor you, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, I just ask that you use each and every one of us, that everyone can see you in us, that we are careful with what we say, what we do, how we act, Father. And we just ask the Holy Spirit to rise up in us. Let our light shine. Let our light shine. We want the devil to know that when we walk down the street, there is a glow about us and that he is scared and he runs the other way. And Father, we know that we can do that because of you, because you are in us. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Father, I ask you to go with each and every person. Bless them, Father. Be with them. Come back and be with us again. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for being with us. Praise God. Amen.